Hello, welcome to my scenery video where I'll be painting some scenery over top of the gradient we made last time. Um, I have my number seven round brush here, nice sable brush, and I also have a number six angled brush. Both of them are watercolor brushes. I also have some black acrylic gouache and I have some water. Now the difference between acrylic gouache and regular gouache, well the main difference is that you can't reactivate it once it dries. So once it dries on your paper or your canvas or your palette, um, it's there for good. You cannot reactivate it. Uh, and that's useful for when you're painting over top of um, a wash or a background and you don't want that background to reactivate and blend in to the top layer. So as I paint this black mountain, I'm just replicating a painting that I did before, um, that background pink will not reactivate and start to blend into the black. But like regular gouache, acrylic gouache has a really nice opaque finish that's sort of satiny and matte, uh, not very shiny, and yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful medium. I'm using my angled brush here so that I get this nice jagged edge uh, to my obsidian hill so it's, you know, it's like cool down lava that's sort of sharp and jagged. And it's a lot of fun to paint landscapes like this or mountains or anything really from nature because uh, you can kind of go random. You don't have to overthink it and yeah, create these neat shapes. So I'm filling in uh, this whole area here with my number seven round brush, a uh, nice sable brush that holds a lot of paint. Um, and so I can go really quickly and fill in that space and that way I get less streaks, it's smoother, looks a lot better when it dries. And I did a second coat as well. And here we have the painting that I'm copying. I'm just looking at it again for reference and I'm going to make a nice light gray uh, to paint the castle. And I'm cracking open a brand new brush, it's so exciting. Um, this is a Series 7 Winsor Newton sable brush. Really tough to get the cap off. I think you can see my teeth marks there <laughs> trying to bite it off. Um, but yeah, it's a gorgeous brush and it's the number four uh, finest sable. But it's a number four and I have to say this is my favorite size paintbrush to work with because uh, when you have a you know a watercolor brush that's made out of uh, sable or mink or, or even like a um, synthetic, but they hold a lot of paint. So a number four, you get a really sh pointy tip so you can get those details and you can paint in little areas. Um, but the paintbrush itself holds more paint so that you don't have to go back to the palette over and over. So it's better than using a one or a two for fine details um, if you have larger areas as well. And using gouache, of course, it dries so quickly that you wanna be able to hold as much paint on your brush as possible. It's like a little mini earthquake there. Uh, so here we go with the gray castle and I've watered down the paint quite a bit so um, that I can draw in the shape nice and smoothly. And it's quite a small, or there's some small details at the top of the castle here. Uh, just these little areas that kind of jut out. And so I wanted to use the um, gouache water down more so that I can uh, quickly you know, draw in this without the paint um, sort of catching or getting clumpy. And this first coat is quite transparent, it's streaky, but as long as I work quickly and I don't go back over what I've already painted um, and you know move in one direction there, then when it dries, the next coat will become more opaque and then by the third coat, you'll barely see that coral color from underneath. And a little bit of that color coming through is really nice. It adds a sort of glow. And here we go with, uh, I think, yeah, layer two, layer number two. And you'll notice I'm holding the brush really close to the bristles and that gives me a lot more control. Now I'm adding a little more black to make a darker gray so that I can paint in the detail of the window across the front of the castle. 
And the trick with this, well, there's a few tricks. First is I'm squeegeeing my brush. I call it the squeegee method where I get a really nice fine tip to the brush by rolling it in the paint. I have my reading glasses ready to go. And now you can see I'm holding it super close to the bristles. But the other trick is start small. So when you're painting a rectangle, a square or a circle, um, and you need the proportions to be correct so that it doesn't look really off and skewed, start really small, smaller than what you want the end result to be. And as you try to perfect that shape, it'll get a little bit larger and larger. Eventually it could get too large, <laughs> so start really small. Of course, another bit of advice would be just draw the shape. And now we're gonna mix our green to create the foliage. And I've decided to mix together deep green with ash green and some white. And that ash green's um, a, a diminished green that's sort of on the cooler end. Uh, and I thought it would look really nice against the black. There'd be a nice contrast, uh, but it also complements the, the coral color sky. So I, you know, I really consider what colors uh, I wanna use and instead of just you know, using a green out of the tube or any old green, I wanted one that would work really well with the colors around it. Here's an example of uh, why this brush is, is so great, in my opinion, is uh, it's, again, holding a lot of paint, but it also has this really fine tip. So depending on how much pressure I'm putting on that brush, the line thickness changes and it um, has sort of a, a calligraphic, or yeah, <laughs> that's the right word. Um, you can create these calligraphic lines, like what, what you would make with a calligraphy pen where it's thin and thick, and that inconsistent, inconsistency uh, is really lovely when you're creating organic shapes. And it also helps, you know, uh, to have a brush that can multitask. You can see I did some thin, vines but then the leaves are a little bit thicker so if I just add a little pressure then yeah I get these thicker leaf shapes. and she's all done. I thought it was a, a great exercise painting the same painting two times in a row. I do prefer the first one that I did. Uh, it's on the bottom there. I like the gradient a little more. The pink goes further down, which I think works nicely, but overall really fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.